People often ask me why correct usage or grammar matters, or if it matters at all. And in fact, I think it does matter quite a lot. It matters actually for a couple of, couple of main reasons and one sort of more minor reason, more sort of debatable reason. The first thing about correct grammar is I think it's more communicative than incorrect grammar. That is to say, you're able to get your point across more clearly and more exactly if you use correct grammar, generally speaking. And the second reason, which I hasten to add is kind of more important in some ways, is that if you don't use correct grammar, you're oftentimes stigmatized by your audience, by your listener, by your reader. That is to say, someone who is frequently using slang words or has misplaced modifiers or subject verb agreement problems, these kinds of things, they will be kind of shut out from the average listener. The listener will say, well, no, that person is really no better than his or her grammar. And the third reason, which is more of a minor reason, but something I do emphasize quite a lot, is I think that correct grammar use has a conscientiousness to it. That is to say, there's an ethical component to correct grammar use, especially for people who are in positions of some authority, for example, doctors or lawyers or professors, or people whose written opinion really matters quite a lot. If they don't use correct grammar, sometimes their opinions and their, say, judicious statements about things are misinterpreted or misunderstood, and that's not something we want. Sometimes it's uh, been said that we are entering what's called an age of post-correctness. People aren't concerned about correct grammar or correct usage anymore. No, they say anything goes, really. We have texts, we have tweets, we have emails, we have you know, labels that people can use, emoticons. So why do we worry about correct grammar? Is this really what's happening now? In some sense, I think it is. I think it is. We are in some sense moving into an age where language is being used in a somewhat, let's say, deformed way, a shortened way, a shorthand way, on a very regular basis by very, very large numbers of people. So what's happening is that, in fact, the language has become babified. It's become dumbed down to a very, very sort of striking degree. I think it's a little bit of a, of a, of a problem. Students' vocabularies, for example, I teach at a college level now. Students' vocabularies are very small. They don't, they don't use big words in tweets. They don't use big words in text. They generally don't even know what these words mean. Uh, one time I suggested to a class that uh, perhaps students should use semicolons more often. They can even use semicolons in texts. And the students all, all laughed. You don't use semicolons in text, professor. You don't do that. In my book, One Day in the Life, I draw almost all the example sentences from one day's writing in America. That is to say, writing that appeared in major newspapers and periodicals. A variety of them, too. Not just the great papers or just the tabloid papers, but a mix of those things. Not just kind of fancy literary magazines like The New Yorker, but also magazines like Us or Sports Illustrated or National Review. So I try to draw all these sentences from one day's writing because I want to get a snapshot of what language was like on that single day. And also, just to demonstrate that we can actually write an entire handbook based on the kinds of usages found in one day's writing and also the kinds of errors that emerge in those, in those newspapers and periodicals. It's, kind of, it's quite interesting. One of the problems that's emerged uh, in, in recent writing is pronoun use. In English, we have male pronouns and we have female pronouns. He, she, his, her. And then we have plural pronouns, they. Now, plural pronouns do not have a gender. Here's the problem. Oftentimes, we'll have a subject in a sentence which has no gender specified. For example, every student. Every student should bring his book to class. Now, that would be fine in all male, say, boys' school or all male college. But in fact, in co-educational se settings, you would want to say something like, every student should bring his or her book to class. That's more acceptable now by English teachers anyway and professors, probably also by editors. However, some people object to, the, to that construction as well. Every student should bring his or her book to class implies there are just two genders. And some people don't want to be forced into either gender. So why not say, every student should bring their book to class? That's called 
the singular they, using their or they, which is plural, to refer to a singular antecedent. More and more accepted, uh, the Washington Post even uh, ran kind of a feature on, on they and decided it was OK to use the singular they. And the American Dialect Society in 2015, in December, declared the singular they the word of the year. So that's, I think, where we're going to have it.